Speed. China's automobile exports hit a record high. Gear changes. New energy vehicles are fast emerging as a key driver of China's vehicle exports. Uh, 20 million new, new energy, energy vehicle, vehicle market vehicle. continued its explosive expansion. Swift and silent EVs. Fierce competition. Domestic car makers are facing an increasingly fierce Electric competition. Electric vehicles from BYD take the top spot worldwide. Unbelievable. The auto industry is the same on the track and off. Everything happened like a dream. For the last few years, electrification has been the goal. One of the most exciting stories is happening here in China. The all-electric racing circuit Formula E is once again back to China. Fans the country where it all began a decade ago. The first Formula E race is won here in Beijing. This year, it's in Shanghai for the first time. China is leading the way in the EV world, so um, for us to be promoting this technology here, it's one of the best places for us to be doing that. 11 teams from around the world, bringing international stakeholders and passionate spectators to the races and the world's largest EV market. What began as an audacious idea has now become a widely recognized future of transport. What's the market been through? Shanghai is known for many things. It's skyline, trade, fashion, just to name a few. But it's also the city that's home to the most new energy vehicles in the world. Almost 1.3 million at the end of last year. There's a lot of electric vehicles, which is uh, great to see. Having secured a victory at the first day of the Formula E doubleheader weekend in Shanghai. Mitch Evans is going to take the win in Shanghai! Mitch Evans is a first-time visitor to the city. Saw quite a few brands I've never seen before. I know China is very much known for their cars and luxury cars. Also new brands that we may not see you know, in other parts of the world. So um, yeah, it uh, was definitely, definitely stood out when I, when I first arrived. It's kind of clear to tell that it's an um, electric vehicle or not. Yes. It's green plate. There are so many green plates. Only pure electric vehicle can have the plate. So many of the cars passing by are electric vehicles. The entire car average price have done around the 40 to 50 percent in the last 10 years. Especially in China, it is around 150,000 to 250,000. Majority cars are sold in this segment. Is that something that people can imagine 10 years ago? No, no, never. Nowadays, you can purchase a car like in this segment, you have almost everything. Long driven distance, they also have autonomous drive things. You also have very good smart car being inside. That drastic decline in price was largely driven by maturing technologies lowering the production costs for automakers. Lithium-ion batteries, for example, are now 85% cheaper to produce than they were a decade ago. Now I should call a car to the FV circuit. This is my car, an EV. Nowadays, I almost always get an EV when I have a car. And as usual, there is a big screen at the driver's cabin. It's fast becoming a must-have for Chinese EVs. And the drivers don't just pick them for look of it. I must say, I kind of enjoy the car hailing experience now since every time I get a closer look at the different EV models, even some new ones that I never heard of before. I'm finally here, the 2024 Shanghai E-Prix. 
there's plenty of excitement for the motorsport and the showroom for some latest EV tech. So this is your racing car for the pre in Shanghai. This is the newest one. So this is the second year that we have the Generation 3. The very first car I drove was around 200 kilowatts in terms of um, power. Now we're at 350 kilowatts. So, you know, almost double in power, double in range, and also a lot more recovery from the electric motor. And I guess the next breakthrough will be taking Gen 4, you know, even closer to probably like Formula 1 in terms of speed, range. 10 years in the making, the circuit has seen three major evolutions in the cars. In the first generation, due to limitations on battery tech, a driver needed to change to a new car halfway through the race in order to get over the finish line. Now, all drivers race a car with the same battery and rolling chassis. But there are almost no limits on the software teams can put into the cars. In Formula 1, aerodynamics is the big race. In Formula E, it's software. And we update the cars every race. We do new software code where we can update the car week in, week out. These racing cars look so different compared to the passenger cars on the road. But this is where some mainstream EV tech originated that eventually makes its way into the cars we drive. We started using silicon carbide here in Formula E uh, in 2017. And four years later, we announced that we'll use silicon carbide in all our future production vehicles. So we were four years ahead of the mainstream automotive industry by using the technology. We were the first team in history in Formula E to re-refine our gearbox oil, the oil we use in the car. We rather than just get more from our virgin sources, we actually recycle that fluid and use it again in the racing car. And that's a solution which we'll apply to our future production vehicles as well. James' team acquired another 62 points in Shanghai, retaining the lead in a team championship. But to better recognize the car makers' efforts, Formula E has introduced the Manufacturer's Trophy, set to be presented for the first time at the close of this season. Jaguar is now second in that race, only nine points behind the leader Porsche. There's the phrase, racing improves the breed, and I think it's very true in the past, and it's very true today with electric cars, which we see the world transitioning to be the majority of cars sold will be electric vehicles. It's incredible just to see the acceleration of, of electric vehicle uptake here in China, and for us, this is our priority market. Like many other auto brands, Jaguar has announced it will turn all electric by 2025 and will launch electric models of the entire JLR lineup by 2030. Launching EV models has been a major topic among auto brands in the past three years. But there have been recent debates in the EU on a deadline for stopping the sales of new gasoline and diesel cars. They still want to enjoy the profit from the IC car sales. But uh, if they continue like this, they will have a problem they do not have accumulated enough technology. Quite a lot of OEMs, Europe OEMs, start to use China technology to help them to boosting the entire development process for the electric vehicle. And OEM is an original equipment manufacturer, a company that makes vehicle parts. In this context, John's referring to car companies. With 30 years experience in the auto industry, Zhang was a co-founder and managing partner of Neo Capital from 2016 to 2019. His investment started before that Chinese car maker got listed in New York. For Ambi Fund, we have almost invested around 4 billion to 5 billion RMB. And for US dollar fund, we spend almost 190 million US dollars. Quite a lot of companies in battery area, onboard charging company, and quite a lot of electrical and autonomous drive company we also invested. A full value chain to invest it. Has that investment paid back? Some of the, our portfolio already become public company and they're being listed. It. And some company like CTO even larger than NIO itself. What John did was to recreate a Chinese EV market in miniature, focusing on the whole industrial chain right from the start, from batteries right through to software. The China Association of Automobile Manufacturers says China has built up a complete, independent and controllable industrial chain for NEVs. And the country is fully independent when it comes to batteries. There are more than 920,000 companies in China in the NEV sector, and a third of them are less than two years old. Before year 2014, investors, they are not so sure of the market. I'm facing the most challenging question. 
in the in year 2015 by a American investor, Mr. Zhang. Can you prove two things? One thing is your Chinese people can manufacture a car. And second thing is you can manufacture a good quality car. After that, 2016, the market is booming like hell. NAV sales and production in China both soared around 540-fold in the past decade. Industrial chain advantages has helped get Chinese car makers pole position in the sector. BYD started out 30 years ago as a battery maker. It's now been a top global NEV seller for two years running. In just two and a half years since the end of 2019, its stock price on the A-share market skyrocketed around 8.5-fold. A significant jump was also seen in stock price in Hong Kong. Other Chinese brands such as Li Auto, Xpeng, and Neo all reported record-breaking sales results last year. Even the consumer electronics firm is joining the market race this year. Everything's happened in such a speed, turning the market into a magnet for even upstream suppliers. The development speed has changed tremendously. When you integrate a new driveline technology, so for example for an 800 volt silicon carbide um, electric drivetrain system, um, in, in a normal classical world you would have a development time of roughly four years, four years plus. Here for, for our local Chinese customers we're looking at currently one and a half years. The German auto parts supplier already cut its ties to combustion engine down to 27% in 2022 less than half from what it was in 2015. Last November, it staged the global debut of its purely electromechanical braking system in China. We we'll try at least not to develop products, for example, in Germany, and then try and implement it in the Chinese market. We would most probably fail because we wouldn't be quick enough. So what we do now is a lot of the new technologies are developed locally here in China. Some of the technologies today are technologies that we're implementing first in China. We're going to industrialize them first in China and then we're going to bring them out into the world. And that's, I think, something that has changed. The changes in the market are not just a result of new car development. So all equipment here we see are the newest generation of your power chargers. Yes, that is true. One is this is launched in 2021, that is launched in 2022, our 480 kilowatts high power charger, which was equipped with the liquid cooling technology. You can just charge in 10 minutes and you can go more than 200 kilometers. The charging station I visited went into operation in May, offering 122 charging lots a new step made by the Swiss-based industrial giant into the e-mobility sector. It's been a title sponsor for Formula E for six years. We are working with um, more than 30 automotive customers in China. We believe the potential for uh, public participation in EV infrastructure investment and operation is yet to grow. And uh, this is the reason why we are launching stations. The public charging infrastructure in Shanghai is ABB's biggest charging station in China. As of the end of last year, China had installed almost 8.6 million charging units. The China Passenger Car Association says the country now owns the most charging facilities. They cover the widest range in product types. In terms of EV charging, last year the total market is about 50 billion kilowatt hour. And in 2030, the market is going to be 600 billion. So that's a tenfold growth in the next six, seven years. So that's continue to provide opportunities for everyone. It will be uh, propelled definitely more installation for in the, in the consumer sector for home applications, but also a lot of demand in public sectors in fleet. Many professionals and industry insiders are now looking to China, just like the return of that E3. Specialists from overseas are frequently seen at booths of Chinese brands in various auto shows, carefully looking at the new models. It's amazing how many cars are here and how many technologies are here that we don't see so much in, in Europe, right? So we see technologies here with battery swapping. We hardly see that in Europe, you know, which are really great models. Though China's car makers have proved their strength in the consumer market, they turn out to hold different opinions on motorsports. Neo concluded its partnership with its Formula E team last year. That Chinese team won the inaugural Formula E Drivers' Championship back in 2015. BYD took advantage of the event to debut its new car model in the Mexican market this January, but so far it's not joined the racing series. 
at the very beginning, quite a lot of Chinese OEMs and startups join Formula E. Now they do not participate. Maybe they see they have more stronger promotion weapon. For example, like a uh, Neo. At the very beginning, they, they, they participate in Formula E to promote globally and locally and then win the first champion. Then they can say all the lifetimes. The passion for motorsports has brought the curious to this all-electric racing circuit. The question is, how many of them will become what be EV owners? Well, those requirements are closely to be met, with fast charging stations and battery swap facilities springing up all over China. As of the end of last year, China was home to some 20 million new energy vehicles. That was only some 6% of the total car number. But the new energy vehicles are taking up an increasing market share in China's automobile market, almost one-third last year. And it's been growing at full speed. In the first half of April this year, sales of NEV surpassed combustion engine cars for the first time, taking up more than half of new passenger car sales in China. That's one national goal the country has achieved a decade ahead of schedule, as NEVs become mainstream. Access to overseas markets is the next step for many local car makers, as they want their brand seen and to hear feedback from outside China. Last year, China became the world's largest auto exporter. That has worried some Western governments, who claim China's making too many cars. If we said the or manufacturer produce more cars than their local market needed is over capacity. I will say all the Europe OEM or American OEM already over capacity decades ago. Nowadays, we have top 10 OEMs around the world. Only one from last year, BYD is number nine. The rest of nine are all foreign OEMs. You will say they are all over capacity. Certain governments want to protect the industry with them. But uh, you need to think in the long-term infections. Higher tariff also discourage the tech growing. Consumer all will be hurt. Bucking those challenges, the capital market is growing. Shares of Chinese EV maker Zikr soared 35% on May 10th on its US IPO, the biggest US listing by a China-based company since 2021.